Hello guys, I'm excited and I'm very, very glad to introduce a special guest to us. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Julie Schatzel and she has spent most of her life on this time-restricted feeding and done so much research on it. She has published a book as well. On the top of it, she is my doctor. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you so much, Julie, for coming to the show and educating the audience. Pal, Dr. Pal, so great to be here. And I'm so glad to join you. So nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I, when I say I was your patient, I want to tell the audience that, as you know, I was obese before. I was weighing like 200 pounds. And the main reason that I was able to bring it down to 155 was because of uh, Julie. And thank you again for doing this. And she motivated me to spread this concept of time restricted feeding everywhere uh, and if given an option to her she will stream this in cnn every day <laughs> <laughs> so so dr pal i was going to say the dramatic change you made was really dramatic because i don't even think i recognized you when we were at one of the medical conferences right <laughs> i was like <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I, actually, there was a funny story. You know, I used to wear a swim shorts at my friend's place when I was 200 pounds. I jumped into the water and the shorts torn apart. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend used to say that even now that, you know, I still have that shorts as a, as a, a memory of that visit. <laughs> Your memento. Memento, exactly. Oh, memento. <laughs> but, um, you know, we talked about this when I was the first first visit with you and you said that you will lose weight and not only weight, your whole outlook to life will differ. Yes. I mean, it is it, to me, it is the only weight loss method that will work permanently, because if you think about it, any other form of weight loss, diet, composition change those are always temporary. I mean, we can go back decades and we can see that that sort of weight loss always finds itself back on the body. Mm -hmm. You look at one year data, two year data, five years, by five years, it's over 95% of people have gained their weight back using those old style, the traditional methods. So this time restricted eating concept, it's very new. In fact, it was only discovered in the animal models, like in the 1990s, you know, I mean, to me, that's kind of new. I, I it, is new. it is new. It is new. Because most of the old traditional methods has been like 1950s, 60s, and people have written books about it. Right, right. So this is, it's actually, I call it a bypass pathway. I call it a secret bypass pathway. And it was discovered by researchers looking at circadian rhythms. So they weren't trying to find a shortcut on how to burn fat or how to make people lose weight more easily. They were looking at how the body intrinsically or naturally functions. What is driving the timing mechanism in the body? And that's the circadian rhythm. But we always think of it as just day and night. It's simple. It's just daytime activity and nighttime activity. We're awake during the day. We sleep at night. That is a circadian rhythm. But eating and fasting is also a circadian rhythm. In fact, it's such a strong circadian rhythm that you are actually burdening the body mm. when you eat outside of your circadian rhythm. It's a burden. Mm. So you could be eating kale and carrots at 10 p.m., but your body is not accepting the nutrient. In fact, it's turning into a toxin instead of benefiting yourself. Mm. So that's the difference is the body treats nutrients and the body's ability to metabolize fat and utilize nutrients is very different between day and night because of our own intrinsic circadian rhythm. Wow, wow. So, you know, the secret bypass, when you said that, I, I think it, we can put it this way, that if you follow this method, you will make sure that you will never get a bypass surgery for your heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's the bypass. Exactly. Secret bypass to bypass your bypass surgery. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's very interesting, Julie, that you mentioned that, you know, even kale, like healthy vegetable like kale, 
if you eat at 10 pm it might turn as an ice cream affecting your body because your body shut down right 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 so it's 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 sort of like i i talk about it like to my patients and you you i've made you shared the story with you but it's sort of like cinderella at the ball she has her carriage her um her gown and she has all of her footmen up until midnight mm. but after midnight she's wearing rags and her footmen have turned to mice and her carriage has turned into a pumpkin so that's what happens to the body with the circadian rhythm if you're eating after that rhythm has switched over to its nighttime mode all of that food just changes in the body like you said it becomes more of a burden it's no longer of benefit so you know similar to the cinderella there's a popular tamil movie a uh, indian movie where the comedian doesn't uh, will, will not be able to see anything after 6 pm <laughs> So I tell my audience that to be exactly like Gounder Mani, that's his name. And like, you know, don't see or don't see, don't eat anything after 6 p.m. <laughs> right, right, right. And that's, that's a very good point you make, because the next question I'm sure your audience has is, well, what time? What time is Cinderella's midnight? You know, like what time is midnight for my body? Because clearly it's not midnight. Well, in the animal study, so the original study from the 1990s, and, and you may have talked about the study too, Dr. Powell, because I know, I know you're familiar with this one. Um, they took two groups of mice and they were identical twins. I mean, exactly genetically the same, but one group was fed on time-restricted eating and the other group was fed on a just leisurely eating whenever they wanted. So basically a pantry that only opened 24 hours a day versus one that opened on time-restricted eating eight hours a day. And after four months, the rats that were only given food for the time-restricted eating window, they were healthy. They were protected. They did not gain weight, even on a fatty diet. So the animal study used an eight-hour eating window. But for humans, we have discovered that it doesn't need to be that strict. Mm. If you can try to get done with dinner before seven, you should be in a TRE window. That should be enough to begin this accelerated metabolism process. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether you know this, Julie, that Indian culture is exactly the opposite of Western culture over here. Because we start dinner usually around like 8, 9 p.m. And the 5, 6 p.m. is where we love this concept called snacks. <laughs> <laughs> My mom actually feeds me with snacks, coffee, and tea around 5, 6 p.m. And then the dinner is usually 8, 9 p.m. throughout my life. And this concept, when you told me, it was like an eye-opener for me. And I was like, you know, whether it's going to work or not, but it really did. And that's why I wanted to promote this concept to everybody so that we can save the swim shots for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that's the challenge that most people face, I think, Dr. Powell, is that most people have more of their eating and the majority of their calories that come in after 4 or 5 p.m. In fact, for most Americans, they've, um, you know, Dr. Panda is behind all of this, all of this animal and human research. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's his circadian lab that discovered all of these statistics. And they did discover that most people take in more than 50 to 60 percent of their calories after 5 p.m. So that's common and universal, probably around the world. Mm. So no wonder most of us are suffering with a swimming suit size that we don't like, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Especially I don't like. <laughs> no, no, absolutely true. Absolutely true. And, um, you know, in the previous video, when I was just introducing this concept of time restricted feeding, I was completely surprised by the, not completely surprised, but I was expecting this, that 90% of the comments where that my dinner time is like 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. Wow. Wow. And I think it's, it has to do with our busy lifestyle as yeah. well. Yeah. So that that's a challenge for many people who work long hours mm. and, and then don't get their free time to eat until later in the evening. Um, I talk about the different personalities or the different styles of eating in my book, if you don't mind, if I can show my book. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 
There you go. Time restricted eating and look inside the lifestyle. Julie shuts up. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, this is available on Amazon. Yes. Um, yeah. If you buy this, you don't have to buy anything else from any other food store. <laughs> <laughs> At least not after like seven o'clock. <laughs> exactly. And when you buy this order from Amazon, don't order this after seven p.m. <laughs> <laughs>